Welcome to the teaching ministry of B.D. Hyman. B.D. Hyman's teachings will prepare you to face life's difficult challenges through the power and knowledge of God's Word. Join us now as we discover the truth in God's Word with B.D. Hyman. Hello and welcome to the program. Most everybody is aware, if they've read the Bible, that Abraham was exceedingly blessed. He was blessed financially and in his life in every respect. And as God blessed Abraham, he plans to bless you because we are in this covenant, the seed of Abraham in Christ Jesus. So let me read to you to establish this in Galatians 3, uh, verses 13 and 14 to begin with. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And then verse 16 says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say as to seeds as of many, but as of one and to your seed who is Christ. Now, this clearly establishes that we are heirs according to the promises that God made to Abraham. And therefore, we have to know what they are because we don't receive anything apart from faith. Faith is how we receive. And therefore, if we don't know what the promises are, we can't apply our faith to them. So you have to know what they are. And God has already decided, God has already declared that all of the promises that he made to Abraham belong to every member of the body of Christ. Because in Christ you become the seed of Abraham and heirs according to the promise. Now you'll find the promise in Deuteronomy 28. The first 14 verses are the promise. And then the rest of that chapter to verse 68 uh, describes the curse. Now we read in Galatians 3.13 that we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. That means that the law has been put to death in the flesh of Christ. He says this. And it is nailed to the cross so that it has no effect in our lives. That's why we are not supposed to touch it. We are to be according to the promise because Jesus has handled the curse. Now, when we look at Deuteronomy 28, and you need to read the promises, it starts by saying, It shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord and observe carefully to do as He tells you. So again, Obedience to the word brings the connection with the blessings. And the Lord wants you blessed in every way, every way. And that's why we have to understand how to access the blessings and shut the curse out because it's been done, but we have to know how to walk in it. This is always the case. This is why there are so many, such a high percentage of Christians whom God loves beyond measure who are being destroyed through lack of knowledge. These blessings belong to you, but you have to learn, and that's what my teachings are here for, how to walk in them. He says these blessings, the blessings of Abraham that now belong to you in Christ, the blessings have been transferred into those who are of the new covenant. They've been transferred to us, both former Jews and former Gentiles. And he says, these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. But they won't overtake you if you're on the wrong path. If you're on God's path, being in agreement with the word in all respects, then these blessings will rush up behind you and literally overtake you. 
But they are, these blessings are not on a different path. They're on God's path. That's why he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all of these things will be added to you. So he says that these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. This is Deuteronomy 28. We're now in the second verse. Because you obey. See, we have to know that everything has been done. It was done 2,000 years ago on the cross. But in order to receive the goodness of God, in order to receive these awesome blessings, we have to put ourselves in the right position. And that's what I want to help you do. Get into position. When people call me, that's a, a lot of what we talk about is where are they in relationship to their blessings? Are they in position to receive their blessings? And if not, then how do you get in position to receive your blessings? That's what it's all about. God, you see, and this is something you need to really, really get a hold of because there's been a lot of putrid teaching on this subject. God is not withholding anything. He has already released the blessings of Abraham into your life. It was done by Christ, but you have to be in the place where they are because there is the God of this world who is running rampant in the world, trying to destroy, and you have to be apart from that in the kingdom so that as you move and live in the kingdom, you're where the blessings are. If somebody advertises that they're giving away free ice cream and they're giving it away at the corner of uh, First and Main and you go to the corner of Third Street and Maple Grove Avenue, guess what? You're not going to get free ice cream. Why? Because the free ice cream is not where you went. The free ice cream is at the corner of First and Main. Just because you decided to go somewhere else and receive free ice cream doesn't mean it's there. That's why it's so important. God's standing there saying, here, it's all yours. But you have to be where God wants you to be. And that's what I want to help you do. So he says, because you obey the voice of the Lord, and this word is his voice, and it's no good just obeying some religious teaching, some man-made version of this word. It has to be the literal word. And that's what's been so perverted in the church. So, if you obey the voice of the Lord, these blessings will overtake you. They'll hunt you down and overtake you. Don't you want to be overtaken with blessings? See, in the kingdom of God, there's no such thing as too healthy. There's no such thing as too rich, too blessed, too happy, too much peace. God is the God of more than enough. Jesus came to bring life and life more abundantly. So this is what God is talking about here. And he says, you'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. Wherever you are, you'll be blessed. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, the increase of your herds and cattle and all of your flocks. Blessed will you be everywhere you go and everything you do. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. Years ago, I made doormats with that exact thing on it. So it would remind me that every time I went in or out of my house, I was blessed going out and I was blessed coming in. And I gave them to a lot of my friends because we need to know this and we need to receive it. Thank you, Lord, I'm blessed going out. Thank you, Lord, I'm blessed coming in. And he says, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. You have the not only the right, but the ability to watch all of Satan's devices fall, fail, be unable to succeed against you. This is what God wants for you. And he says they'll come against you one way and they will flee seven ways. In other words, the enemy will be in total disarray. But you have to be in the right place. The Lord will command the blessing 
on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. He will bless you. Now here's a key. He will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. He's not going to bless you if you're at the wrong place. He's only going to bless you if you're in his place. If you're walking according to the kingdom, if you've come out of the world and you're in the kingdom, come out of religion and you're in his kingdom, where all the power and all the truth is, that's his storehouse into which you sow your tithe. If you're not sowing your tithe into his storehouse, meaning where all the truth and all the power is, then the windows of heaven are not going to be opened and the devourer is not going to be rebuked because you've tied God's hands. You're not in his place. If you're bringing all of your tithe into his storehouse, then he will bless you. And here he says he will command the blessing on you and in your storehouses and in everything you set your hand to. God commands it if you're in the right place. And that's what my teachings bring you into. That's what I want to help you find is how to be in the place you need to be to receive the blessings. Most of the church is over at 3rd Street and Maple Grove Avenue while the blessings are pouring out at 1st and Main. And they think it's because God is withholding something because that's what they're taught. No, God is not withholding anything. But God does require that you walk according to this word. Every promise of God is conditional. Every single one. And it starts out here saying that it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord and observe to do all that he commands you, then these blessings will come on you and overtake you. If you obey the word of God, this will work in your life. That's how you put yourself in place. So if you're obeying part of the word, but meanwhile receiving all kinds of conflicting doctrine, then it's not going to work. You have to be in God's kingdom. And he says, he'll command the blessing upon you and in everything to which you put your hand, in the land in which the Lord is giving you, in kingdom land, in his place. And he says, the Lord will establish you as a holy people unto himself. And again, he says, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. See, it's, there's only one way this works. And when we do it God's way, oh my goodness, it works. The blessings pour out of every nook and cranny of your life. God is standing there waiting to bless you, waiting to deliver you from pain and sickness and bring you into divine health, waiting to prosper you financially, waiting to bring you into a place of peace and joy as you've never known before, waiting to put you in right standing with him so that he can bless you. That's what God is waiting for. People think they're waiting for God to move. No, God's already moved. He's already done it. Jesus has already gone to the cross. He has already borne everything for you. The blood has been shed. The Holy Spirit has been sent. He was sent on the day of Pentecost. And this is the covenant that the Lord has given us. But there are so few Christians who actually walk in this covenant. That's why Jesus said, for those who have ears to hear. For those who have ears to hear. He says in verse 12, the Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. He keeps emphasizing this. Everything you do will prosper, will be blessed if you're in the right place. He says you will lend to many nations and shall not borrow. That's not a condemnation for having well thought out measured debt, business debt, mortgage on your house, whatever. It's saying that we're going to come to a time when we're going to be the ones who have all the money and even nations are going to come to us to borrow. 
This is where God wants you to get to. That's why he talks about the wealth of the world being turned over to the just, to the righteous. Well, it isn't just turned over to everybody who names the name of Jesus and says, oh, Lord, I love you. No, it's those who prove their love by obeying God, by being obedient. And he says, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed, again, here it is. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God and not turn aside from any of the words that I speak to you to the left or to the right to go after other gods to serve them. Now, a lot of this applied at the time. But now, since we are this side of the cross and have to look at everything in the Old Covenant from this side of the cross, we realize that since we are now the seed of Abraham in Christ Jesus, that these promises apply to us. And therefore, the commandments that he's talking about are not the Old Testament commandments, even though the Ten Commandments of the Old Testament are a very sound structure for godly living, with the exception of the Sabbath, which is the law, which is dead. But he's talking about so much more than that. He's talking about the commandments of Christ. And you all know, and if you don't have it, you need to get it, that I have a tape set called the Ten New Testament Commandments of Jesus because he gave us ten New Testament commandments. So from our standpoint now, as a holy nation and a royal priesthood, as the body of Christ, the family of God, who are heirs according to all of this in Christ, in Christ, we must realize that it is the fulfillment of what we are told in the new covenant that we have to focus on. We must realize that Christ is not only the beginning and the end, he is the fulfillment of everything God wants, everything God has done. And so the commandments we're talking about here, if we obey the Lord, if we obey his voice, are the commandments of Christ in the New Testament. And they're essential. It begins with the commandment to receive the Holy Spirit with the gift of tongues. And he commands us to overcome. He commands us to be strong. He commands us to do many things. And those are the ones we must follow. So we can't just take this awesome Bible, which is the Word of God, which is God, and decide what parts of it we will take, what parts of it will believe, what parts of it will act on. We have to act on the whole of it. In 3 John 2, the Lord says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. Above all things that you prosper and be in health. This is essential. And if you, if you do it God's way, you will get God's results. And God is a blesser. In the first chapter of James, he says, let no man say when he is tempted or tested. The word is, it's most translations, it says tempted, but the Greek word is pirazo, which can as easily be translated as tested as well as tempted. So I always say that as tempted or tested. Let no man say when he is tempted or tested that he is tempted or tested of God. For God does not have evil, nor does he use evil. Every destructive thing in your life is evil. I want you to get these teachings, the blessings of Abraham. They are essential to our covenant. They are the very heart and soul of what God wants for you. The blessings that he gave Abraham cover every area of our human existence, everything that we need everything that we do. This is not something that just happens all by itself. We have to appropriate everything by faith. By faith. But if you don't know what it is God wants for you, how can you have faith for it? Faith isn't generic. You can't just say, oh Lord, bless me today. You have to know exactly what God has 
provided, what he says, and then receive it. Receive it specifically. Receive it with joy. Receive it with excitement. And put yourself in the right place for these blessings to overtake you. These blessings are rushing down God's path and they will overtake those who are on his path. And that's what I want to help you do. That's what I want you to grab a hold of and walk in. I want you to have the, the fulfillment of everything that Jesus has already paid for. The Lord is waiting for you to grab hold of this. He's waiting for you to be in a place to receive this. And I want to help you find that place of blessing to get on God's path. And when people call me and I talk to them, we work through all the specific circumstances of their lives to find out what is taking them on a different path, what is bringing them out of that place of blessing, what's pulling them to the side and, and out of this river of God's blessings and, and into the quicksand and the, the mire and the muck at the side of the river. You don't want to be trying to wade through that stuff and sinking in quicksand. You want to get back in the middle of God's river. And that's where the blessings flow. The Lord talks a lot in the Word about sons of obedience versus sons of disobedience. Sons of obedience are the ones that will continue with him, that will be blessed now and walk in the blessings of Abraham and will continue with him for all eternity. Sons of disobedience are going to be off on another path and wind up in the swamp. And this is our choice. I don't want you to be in the swamp. I want you to learn how to appropriate everything that belongs to you. As I said, there's no such thing as too healthy, too rich, too happy. Find out what all these blessings are. If you don't know, you can't apply your faith. People have been talked out of many of their blessings because they've been convinced that they can be complacent, that they're supposed to be miserable, whatever lie they've been buying into. I want you to get your thinking in line with God's thinking so that all of these blessings can overtake you, so that everything you do will be successful and that you can have everything God's given you. God has already provided for you to have all the goodness that is in this earth. God has already provided for you to be blessed going out and blessed coming in and blessed in every area. So we have to look at the church and say, well, if he's already provided this and this is what he wants for you, this is his will for you, then why are so many Christians struggling? Why are they sick? Why are they depressed? Why are their lives coming unstuck? It's not God's will for you. It's not God's will for anyone to be miserable, to have heartache and struggle. No. So the reason that so many of God's people are there, are being cursed, is because they don't know how to put themselves in position to receive. When the Lord first called me to ministry, he said things to me that I didn't really understand fully at first. And one of the things he said to me was that he was calling me to remove the garbage and give life. And I've learned since then, long since, that the garbage is all of the false teaching, all of the perverted word, all of the deceptions that are promoted by people who don't teach this word accurately for whatever their reasons. And it's up to you to know what the accurate word is and be able to be in that place to receive blessing. I don't have any other agenda. I'm not trying to get anywhere. 
My whole focus is for you to walk in your blessings. That's the purpose of this ministry. That's what we're here for. And that's all we care about is that you are able to walk in the finished work of the cross in your life, that you are able to overcome and be successful now and sit with Jesus in his throne for all eternity. That's my agenda. That's my agenda. And so every time one of you calls me and you really have ears to hear and you've gotten these teachings and you've grasped them and you've seen the difference between the truth and the half-truth, the truth and truth mixed with the lie, you've seen the difference between the power of the word and the watered-down mess that most people accept. And then you have ears to hear how to get yourself into that place, to actually walk in this. There are Christians that I talk to all the time who have never walked in the blessings of God. And they've given up hope of ever walking in the blessings of God. They have been convinced that God just wasn't going to do it. And then they learned how to put themselves, and this is my joy, this is what I'm here for, this is what keeps me going, is the few of you that actually get it, that go from misery to joy, that go from sickness to health, that go from lack to abundance, and know how to stay there, and how to continue in this, and how to keep the pollution out. You should be blessed. God's provided for it. It's his intention. It's his will. People walk around saying, oh, I just want God's will in my life. Well, this is his will, that you be blessed in everything to which you set your hand. And in Psalm 1, I just want to read this to you before we end. He says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the word of the Lord, and in his word he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Don't you want to be in a place where everything you do is successful? where you just can't get out of the way of blessings? Well, that's where God wants you to. So get these teachings. Call me and let me help you be where you should be. I'll see you next time. Remember, you shall know the truth, and it's the truth that will make you free. We trust that you have been encouraged in God's Word during this broadcast. If you have and would like others to enjoy the teaching, write to us. Or to order materials or to make a gift by phone, you can by calling the phone number on the screen.